Hi everybody and welcome to A-Level Photography. So, um, basically, um, as you can see on the slide, there is a um, whole list of things that you will cover as part of your coursework. So in A-Level Photography, it is 60% coursework and 40% exam, just like it is in art and design and art textiles. Um, so the way I like to run the course to make sure that everybody has um, a standard which is going to enable you to access uh, the really exciting and interesting aspects of photography, I start the course by running a number of workshops. This usually lasts from September to December and sees you covering things like composition focus, ISO, shutter speed, lighting techniques, exposure, histograms, colour versus black and white photography, what the benefits and drawbacks can be for different subject matter, um, Photoshop and file formats, um, and understanding darkroom. Now, we don't have a darkroom, but it's really important that you understand the process and the benefits and the exciting aspects that come with that. Um, the Photoshop aspect of the course is what I call the second discipline. So you study A-level photography, your raw photographic skills are really, really important. You are not encouraged to rely on Photoshop to make your photographs good. They sh Photoshop shouldn't be used to correct, but to develop and enhance and to take us on journeys to different places within our thoughts. So. Photoshop shouldn't be um, relied upon, um, but used in a completely different way. So I teach you um, the basics with regards to Photoshop quite early on, but throughout the course, you will be looking at really complicated and technical edits. Um, but each of you will be doing different ones because your work is all going to be different. Um, once the once the workshop based learning has taken place and it's not just going to be kind of theoretical learning you are going to have to evidence the different skills that we're covering photographically you present them in your book uh, and then we move on to your your independent ideas now everything from the workshop based learning activities and your own ideas all need to come from the same place. So your personal project theme is research and selected right at the start of the course. And I urge you to possibly consider what that might be. Now, start thinking about the kinds of photography you're interested in um, and start planning and researching and understanding where this could lead. Um, then once you have that, everything you take photographs must relate to that. Even if you're focusing on composi composition as a skill, the subject matter and the kinds of things you're photographing need to come from your theme. So that's really important to understand. Um, the way you'll be assessed is you will be um, given constant one-to-one um, -one feedback as well as class feedback, peer feedback. Um, it's all personalised and it's really in depth. So I'll tell you what things are doing really well and where possibly you might need to put further consideration or where this could lead. So I'll give you ideas and insights into you could do this, you could go here, you could think about this person as an inspiration. Have you seen this? Have you considered that? Um, and see how you feel from there. So this slide represents um, the exam aspect of the course. But before I talk about that, I just want to clarify that the coursework aspect, the 60%, is something that you will study from September of year 12 and it takes you right through to February of your year 13 course. Uh, you'll complete all of your ideas, the development of your ideas, all of the editing, the annotation, um, the independent research into exciting and inspirational practitioners, You'll be expected to critically analyse their work and then use their work to inform your own. And that needs to be kind of very present. We, we need to be able to see that that person has inspired your work. And it's not about responding and copying them. It's responding and taking inspiration from their work and 
using that to inform something new that you create. All of that leads you into all of the varying outcomes that you will produce. It could be digitally uh, created, you could be looking at physical manipulations, you could be burning, stitching, bleaching your photographs. There's a huge variety of things that you could explore. And then you'll have your final outcomes that could be all the way through the course. It doesn't, you don't have to wait until the end to produce those outcomes, um, but some of them will be the conclusion to your journey. You will look at one aspect you're really inspired by and then you will kind of use that to fuel the majority of your work and then produce your conclusion, the end product, the thing that represents the journey you've taken. Alongside this practical um, work, which could take the form of a number of sketchbooks and out of sketchbook pieces, you also have to write a um, standalone essay of continuous prose that relates to your chosen theme again. So it's not something that you won't know about. It's not something that you have to research separately. This completely ties into your personal project. Um, that is worth 18 marks out of your total coursework. And it is very important. It's a different way to perhaps that you're used to thinking about the creative side of your um, personality so you might not be used to writing in such a kind of creative and analytical way but we kind of support you through that. Then your coursework is over as soon as the exam board at Excel kind of introduces or sends the exam paper so they will send it to staff usually just a couple of days before this this year we had it the weekend before our students received it on the Monday. So it depends when we get it, how much we can do to prepare um, your kind of thoughts, your mind process, because it'll be something really, really unusual. You can see from the um, slide there, I've put some previous exam titles have included environment that's quite self-explanatory, but then variation and similarity or stability and or change, you might think, well, what does that mean? If you've done photography or art at GCSE, which you should have to gain um, entry into the course, then you will be used to that from your GCSE exam. But we all know that this year's exam was very different. Um, due to the current situation and so we will fully support you in understanding and being able to access the exam theme. That's usually released from the 1st of February so if that falls on a weekend you will get it as soon as possible um, that following week. So it's usually on the Monday even if you don't have a lesson we will deliver it to you in some way so that you can kind of start with it immediately and, and use that time as effectively as possible. You get around eight school weeks to have access to a specialist teacher. So, you know, if you're in my class, that would be me. Um, whoever your teacher is will be able to fully support you in accessing the exam theme, what that means, what it could mean. But essentially, at Excel, create themes which are so broad that you should be able to do whatever you want, really, whatever creative avenue you really want to explore, something that maybe you've not had an opportunity to explore in your personal project and you really would love to do that. You know, as long as you can justify how it connects to the theme and, you know, where the stepping stones have led you, then that's absolutely fine. And we will fully support your creative journey there. Um, you can see some examples of work at the bottom there. Some are landscapes. Um, you could literally look at fashion photography, portrait photography, you know, you can look at documentary style photography, anything, anything. There is not any one way to do this. It's worth 40%. Um, as I've written in that um, small amount of information there, you do have to cover the same assessment objectives as you are expected to in your coursework. There are four of them, but you have a much smaller time frame. So rather than having a year, let's say you have eight weeks 
but the fact that you've already done all of your coursework and you've learned from mistakes and you've understood maybe where the pitfalls have been in your working methods and your style, you should be able to reflect on that and then prepare for this adequately with our support. OK, so hopefully that's all um, clear for you with regards to coursework and exam. If it isn't, please feel free to email me with any questions that you might have. My email address is Walden, W-A-L-D-E-N-V, at holmer.org.uk. And I'll be able to answer any questions that you have, show you any examples, etc. But we are fully um, able to support you in any way possible through these um, strange times. Over the next few slides, I just want to spend a little bit of time showing you some examples of work that has been done, um, not just um, from Holmer Green, but under my teaching to show you the possibilities and limitations, um, you know, that could occur or could appear. So depending on what your personal project theme is, you are going to be able to photograph certain things and you'll have to steer away from certain things because it needs to be relevant and appropriate. So if you're really wanting to go for a very diverse range of things, keep your personal project theme broad. Like the exam boards, themes are very broad, so you can delve into lots of different things. So on the um, on the slide here, we've got some unusual angles and viewpoints being explored, and it's more kind of architectural based um, subject matter. <clears throat> this one you can see um, is quite um, disturbing, perhaps. The photograph has been really considered in the, in the first place, um, the posing, the makeup, all of the attention to detail, and then the way that the student has printed burned and presented to create her outcome. Every single thing that you do is going to have purpose. You might not know straight away everything that you want to do with a specific image, but that's why we really encourage you to take as many images for every single shoot that you do, as many images as possible for as many angles and viewpoints, uh, compositional considerations, lighting techniques. That's what all the, what the workshops are supposed to help you with so that you have these hundreds of photographs that you can select from and that you can do lots of different things to. The next slide here you can see um, it's the same um, model subject of the photograph and the photographer has decided to explore angles and viewpoints once again. You can see that the um, subject is wearing a face mask of some kind now, it looks very different in the black and white photograph than in the colour photograph, not only because the angles differ, but the black and white image, because you don't know colour is present, it, it may be um, mud that may link to a different kind of narrative because of that kind of colouring involved. Um, you know, has she come from a war zone? has something happened to her, whereas in the colour image, because of the vibrant colours and the serene facial expression and the way that she's kind of like laying her head back, it has a much calmer and softer um, kind of consideration. So every decision that you make is really important. I encourage students to take all of their photos in colour because it's really easy to turn an image into black and white afterwards. It's not as easy to add colour. So take photos in colour and then if you want to create different narratives with those images, we can easily do that in Photoshop afterwards. But that's not about fixing. As I've mentioned, it's about creating a completely different feeling behind the image. Um, this image was taken after dipping um, the subject into a bathtub. So you can see they're completely um, covered in water, but you can't see the surface water. So that's dried. The makeup is very naturally bled across the face rather than a lot of students. They force that and then you can tell it's forced. So 
if you want really convincing imagery, sometimes as long as you're safe and appropriate, it's important to actually go through the process to get the realistic outcome. So don't just spray them with water. If you can just dip them under the water and pull them back out safely, um, it has that realistic impression. The image here looks really cold, obviously not just because of the water, it's the intensity of the blue eyes, the shirt colour, the coldness of the tiles, and the narrow depth of field as well creates that blurred background and really enhances her as the subject matter. She's not looking directly into the camera, but she is looking and captivating our attention. So they're really powerful images. This is really interesting as well. Um, this student went out and about and wanted to take masses of different um, photographs of nature. And the way he has created this 360 impression is really interesting. You can see here um, anatomy and health. Uh, the image um, with the mask obviously is kind of more raw based photography and then um, Photoshop has enhanced the depth of the blacks in the image and the dark qualities versus the highlights. Whereas the other image that's been done on Photoshop to kind of um, emphasize the the muscles and the kind of everything that goes on under the surface of our skin, um, which is really interesting. This student actually um, used the model's hair to trap the model in her own hair to create um, a prison, if you like, which could um, infer insecurities that a person might have and wanting to hide. So that could create really interesting subject matter. OK, you know, all these photographs that I'm showing you are just examples of the possibilities available to you, whatever your interests are whatever you are passionate about, you can draw them into your photography and make your images really interesting. These make me smile every time I see them. That idea that the chicken, you know, where has it come from? You know, it's kind of past history, etc. how things have evolved, or is it a case of it has kind of ideas beyond its station, it's dreaming big, it, you know, it's a chicken, but it wants to be this or it thinks it's this. And there we've got the beautiful little lone flower, but actually, does it have um, kind of a bigger bite? Simple still life photography can be absolutely beautiful. And then the idea of kind of using um, different things so movement, shutter speed, the ink in, in the water there. Obviously that image has been turned upside down because gravity, you know, moves downward. But you can see there that just by positioning the photograph upside down, we're creating a really nice um, interesting photograph. And also the image um, with the portrait is seeing how we can use projections. So this image, um, there's a projection over the face um, and then the eye has been intensified to create that kind of demon-esque um, obsession over the top. Um, the image um, you can see there with the subject sitting was then the studio. We have a studio that we have created. We have got um, different backdrops and we've got studio lighting. We've got um, smaller kind of light boxes to place objects inside. So we have got um, a number of um, facilities available to us that a lot of other places don't. So we're really lucky to have that. So with regards to your bridging work, I have requested that you investigate some of those things uh, like composition, focus, shutter speed, etc. that we are going to be utilising in the first few weeks of the course. So I want you to create, you can do it how you want to, um, but it needs to be work that can be altered and presented in a different format. So, you know, don't handwrite it all um, and, and then that's all you have. Try and do it on the computer in a way that you can re-edit if necessary. So on Word or PowerPoint, um, that would be ideal. Um, there are lots of things there that I want you to really kind of investigate. And right here, you can see these are some of the examples that I've created whereby, you know, you can 
see composition their focus this is what it looks like this is what it means keywords etc i would like you to use some research imagery but i would also like you to go out and about when you are able um safely to take photographs so that you can use your own work to show that you understand what these things mean okay so that is it in a nutshell i hope that it's all um understandable for you but if you do have any questions please please send me an email um, and I will get back to you as soon as possible. I hope this is uh, an exciting prospect to you and that you feel that you can really get your teeth into it and you are looking forward to starting the course. I'm looking forward to seeing you all uh, when that is possible. Thank you very much. Bye.